So we're live. We are indeed. Are you ready to talk about this masterpiece of horror science fiction? <laughs> indeed I am. You are? Yes. Well, that's exciting. <laughs> you sound very uh, bubbly and effervescent tonight. Well, you know, it's a mashup of two things I love, horror and science fiction. That's, so It's certainly a mashup. We shall see. <laughs> we shall see. So, okay, well, uh, I'll be curious to hear your take. I haven't heard your thoughts. Well, you will. I, I know I will. You will. I, I, I know they're coming. <laughs> well, greetings, Imagination Connoisseurs. Once again, it is I, your Duke of Dope Discourse, your Master of Fun and Wonder, your Viceroy of Verisimilitude, and your Sommelier of Cinema, Robert Meyer Burnett. And I'm here with my compatriot, my fellow traveler in this life. And who might you be? I am Elizabeth Gwendolyn Bell. I am the ace, the arbiter of cinematic excellence. You're and... All the Enchantress of Entertainment. And you're also a student at Pasadena's prestigious art center. I am. College of Design, where you're painting giant giant canvases. Yeah, I stretched one of my giant canvases a couple days ago and put gesso on it. And now I have my drawing on it and I'm about to paint. It's looking amazing. I can't wait. We'll have to show it on the show. Okay. You know. Uh, so tonight... I think this is appropriate. I think you picked this. Moon X. Moon X. Moon X is what we have. This is a Pinot. You know, our kind of our go-to thing is Pinot. Hang on. <laughs> is this a Trader Joe's special? It is. It is. Moon X for you sci-fi fans out there. <laughs> uh, that sounds like a Sam Raimi movie. or a, No, not a movie that Bruce Campbell was in. Actually, it was yeah. in Moon Trap, but, you know. Uh, why don't, why don't uh, let me pour it up for you. Pour it up. Um, pour it up. Okay, there's a healthy pour for you. Why, thank you. Now, we are here to talk about um, director Paul W.S. Anderson's. This would be his his third movie. Behind Shopping and, of course, Mortal Kombat, everyone's favorite video game movie. Event Horizon, a $60 million. Really? Science fiction epic. $60 million? S Sixty million dollars. Wow. Sixty million dollar epic. Uh, Nineteen ninety seven. It predates his next film, Soldier. Then he did Alien vs Predator, Resident Evil, and I would say that we should drink to that. Let's drink to we that. We should drink to that. <laughs> uh, cheers to you. And to Event Horizon. I have to say that, Mr. Anderson, Mr. Anderson. <laughs> Uh, this is quite good. Oh, where is he? What? Your, um, your Matrix figure. He's up there in the box. In the box? Yeah. Free the toys! Come on, man. <laughs> so I have to say that I do not love Paul W.S. Anderson as a director. However, I don't think he's particularly hugely talented but I do like watching his movies. Oh. I think he makes very watchable, sometimes pretty good, schlock. And and yet... Is that what you consider this film? No. I oh. consider this film a major misfire that has a lot to love about it. Well, we'll get to that part. We'll Let's... Get, we, will get, we will get to that part. Now, I have to say... Now, people before people think I'm ripping on the guy because I'm, I'm not ripping on him because his movies are very, very watchable. Well, what are some of his other movies? Have I seen them? Well, like uh, Alien vs. Predator. Have I seen that? No. Resident Evil, which is based on the video game. His second yeah, video game adaptation. I don't watch video game movies. The, the problem with his movies, to me, it, he, he the remake of Death Race. He made Pandorum. Uh, yeah, they're 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 all these they're all sort of derivative, you know. I was hoping Soldier, the movie that followed this, which I actually again like this movie. I whenever it's on, I will watch it. I enjoy the time that I watch it. I have not seen it. And when it's over, I feel disappointed. Mm. And and yet and yet, very watchable. Maybe it's because I'm a little too old to to enjoy these films. It doesn't matter what I think. We'll get into that. The real question is, why don't you tell the folks at home, what is Event Horizon <laughs> about? All right. Event Horizon. So, the premise is there is a ship 
that <clears throat> got lost in space in space and they haven't heard from it in seven years seven years just disappeared disappeared and so um they are on a mission to go find out what happened to this ship it just appeared out of the blue one day people thought it was destroyed it wasn't destroyed and so a rescue mission is sent right yeah because they don't know if anyone has survived on the ship or what they do not so they um they have a ship and then the the scientist who who built the ship joins the crew that is going to go on this rescue mission now i have to say this movie has a great cast it really does and i really love the acting in this film the acting is good lawrence fishburne is the captain of the lewis and clark the ship, who is, I think he's first rate in this movie. He is. He's he is great. peak Larry Fishburne. Can I call yeah. him Larry? Uh, Sam Neill, of course, who starred previously in a, a Liz Vue's movie, Possession. Possession. I from think 1981. That he uh, is now that weird creature. In this uh, movie, he's the weird creature from Possession. You've got Kathleen Quinlan, who came off a role playing a character in The Doors. You have Jolie Richardson, who is awesome. Yes, you I know? love her. I, I, the cat Jack Noseworthy is in this movie. There's a number of other great actors yeah. in the film. Yeah. Some good, uh, uh, Sean Pertwee is in this movie. Yeah, there's some good acting in this The film. acting is, is, and that's a thing. Again, uh, Paul Anderson, he, he puts together a, a, a cast, a good cast, which make these movies very watchable. With 60 million, I would hope you would get a good cast. Well, the production design in this movie is first rate. John Mollo, who designed the costumes, worked on things like Star Wars, I think Alien. I mean, come on. The, the, the sets are very lavish in this movie. Okay, they're lavish, but... Anyway, yeah. so, so our group, Sam Neill built this ship. He's the right. newbie, and then Larry Fishburne is the captain. Yes. <clears throat> and his team specializes in rescue missions yes. in space. Mm -hmm. So they're going off, and it's going to take almost two months to get there. Yeah, they're going to to Neptune, basically. Mm -hmm. The event horizon has been spotted, or they've they received a beacon or something. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing we have to say is Sam Neill's wife killed herself. She did. And he's racked with guilt about it. Yes. And he the movie opens and he's dreaming of her. Yes. And he right. awakens and it's it's rather disturbing. Yeah, he's dreaming of her. She doesn't have eyes. It's very freaky. It's very freaky. And um okay, so they're on this mission and where does it where does it actually really start? <laughs> well, I mean, it starts when they arrive at the event horizon. True. Okay. So they arrive there and... And the rescue, they, they, the, the ship looks pretty intact, but yes. no crew, no life forms. Yeah. So they, they don't detect... Uh, actually, the detection is weird. It, it can't detect whether there's life form there or not. Something's wacky in Denmark. Something's a little weird. So they um, put together a team to go check it out. So they, Well, before that... Sam Neill finally spills the beans about where what the event horizon was oh, really yes, doing. Oh, yes, right. So he explains how um, this ship can travel through through time, basically. Well, it's, it's, it's like it's traveling like through space. You can fold up space and you can get from one point to the other instantly. Yes, you don't have to travel the speed of light. You bend space-time and you yes. travel through literally into another dimension... Mm -hmm. to get to where you're going. Yeah. So you're basically folding up space and then, yeah. And it's a gravity drive. Which I thought that was pretty brilliant. Pretty that, neat. That idea. You know, you know it's, it's very Dune-esque. It, 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 again, it, it harks back to a lot of other science fiction concepts. Yes. But this, it's called the gravity drive. Yes. And when they engaged it, that's when the ship disappeared. Yes. Right. Right. Okay. So... Um, some of them go onto the ship and start checking it out to see what's going on. They don't find any crew, um, initially, and, um, it's kind of a weird, eerie 
ship. Like it looks like a gothic cathedral in space. I mean, the, the ship well, is just, very just the, long and the way yeah. it's designed. I mean, it's almost like the Discovery in 2001. It's got this long spine. Yeah, like I don't see, the, I don't understand why you would put something so long and delicate in the middle of a ship. Well, because in space you don't have to, it doesn't have to be, be we're so used to things that are beefy. So you've got the crew quarters on yeah, one why? hand. why? Why put this long, narrow, vulnerable piece right in the middle of your well, ship? It's not like it's going to war. And just like the discovery, in a way, I think that the the the, the it, it it has a two thousand. It's reminiscent of two thousand one in that the drive unit is in one a, one end, the sh crew units in the other, and there's a spine that holds together. You cannot tell me that it I, isn't somewhat inspired by two thousand one. Well, fine, maybe it is, but I think it's a bad design. All right. Well, it's not like it's going to war against an Imperial Star Destroyer. Or no, even but oh. not not even so. Like, but any kind of anything could a meteor could break that in half well that's a good that's a that's a very astute that's I very think astute ships of you that are designed like that are it's just bad it's bad design makes no sense nonsensical Micro, uh, okay all right but gorgeous kind of looks like a eh. cathedral in space does it you have that feeling yeah when you the long corridor it's kind of got a almost a, a bony organic feel to it i guess where are the flying buttresses? I want to see flying buttresses. Okay, there you go. Flying pff, flying buttresses. So when they get on board the ship, everybody's gone. There's no sign of the crew. Right. But clearly sinister shit's gone on. They find blood places. There's blood and then weird growth on some of the yeah, walls. Yeah, you don't know what... And, then, and no one really and, seems very concerned about that growth. Yeah, it's like they they're just looking like, they at like, this, look at it and they're these, like, no, they don't even react to it. Like, they don't take any samples. They're like, like what, what is all this? Weird looking organic stuff on the walls. And then, of course, uh, Jack Noseworthy, the engineer of the Lewis and Clark, goes back to check on the gravity drive. Right. Which has the coolest set in the whole movie is this gravity drive. Yeah. I mean, this, pl this part of the ship is pretty amazing. I mean, the craftsmanship of designing each and every single one of those little circular plates that are all over that globe and all over the walls it's like wow that that's like some serious art <laughs> it also looks sinister as hell it looks like this gravity drive by way of hellraiser which is yeah. definitely what the i mean yeah. even like opening the lament configuration you, you in hellraiser yeah I mean, this it, is this movie is Hellraiser trying to be Hellraiser meets Alien. Well, wait a minute, meets, meets Solaris, but we haven't got there yet. We haven't got there well, yet. Well, you brought up Hellraiser. I was I was holding that card until the end, but you just brought it out. Oh, I didn't know you were gonna say it. But so this this gravity drive room. Here's what here's one of the things that that bothers me about the movie. Oh, are we talking about things that bother well, you? Well, no, but plot-wise, when you look at this gravity drive, I love all the production design, but when you get into that gravity drive room, it's like, uh-uh, no way. Like, you know something sinister and bad. is like, you, like <laughs> did anybody... Very it's very goth. Yeah, it's, it's very, very goth, and like, I'm thinking at the end, like... It, like it's like, very steampunk. When they first built this, and, and here's another one of my problems with the movie, they had to have tested, like, a smaller version of this drive. Right. It's like they just built this one drive, and, and Sam Neill's, like, uh, it, they seem to be surprised that, like, I would have thought they would have tested, like, 25 different versions of this before they built this gigantic spaceship. Okay, but before they even go in there, one of the crew who's investigating the ship, which, by the way, this ginormous ship, it only takes them, like, five minutes to investigate the entire ship. And all they show you are is, is like, two, two rooms. That's it. Two rooms and a hallway. That's all you get to see in this ginormous well, well, ship. Well, it's... It, the, the, okay. Okay, so anyway, this... The one... The youngest crew member... That's Jack Noseworthy. Yeah. He goes into... The, he's, like, kind of drawn to that, that room. Which is not what you expect from the engine of a spaceship. Yeah. It's not supposed to draw you in anywhere. He's drawn in, and then he... The the circle in the center becomes like a, a liquid, and he sticks his hand in there. Because that's what you do when something turns to liquid. Well, they might have seen John Carpenter's Prince of Darkness, you know, in the mirror. Right. Because that's <laughs> the thing. There's, em there's images in this movie that I'm like, bruh. Yeah. Let me just tell totally. you, a couple years before, you know, John Carpenter did this whole movie thing. is derived from uh, it, something uh, else. I, I, yes, the it entire is. The movie. entire movie. It, it truly is. But you know what? Then it was a mirror in an old church. 
Now we're in a spaceship yeah. around Neptune orbit. Right. So, you know, when you stick... And, and the thing he is... He sticks his hand th- this in, is and what, of course, something grabs it, and he's, he's pulled in. I mean, this is... The guy's an engineer. He's dealing with machinery, and suddenly something opens up, and he's looking at liquid that yeah. isn't flowing out anywhere. And a strange liquid. Would you seriously touch that? No. No, you would throw you, something into it, maybe. Oh, I, no, you'd call up and go, why does this engine have liquid in it? Yeah. Like, it, it's... I mean, you've got the guy who designed the ship... There. Why wouldn't you ask him? Yeah, but you know what? I, I'll tell you something. As much as I know all of this, as much as I'm like, bruh, Prince of Darkness, yo, what's up? Don't stick your hand in there. I'm still going with it. I'm still going yeah, with okay, it. Yeah, okay, because you're curious because the film has just basically started. Yeah, and you, there's now a mystery. You're having it's the mystery of this. Uh, but, but I, I, and I have to say, when I first saw this film, I did not know it was a horror film. I just thought I was going to see a science fiction film. I saw it in the theater, so I had no idea that it was a horror film. And back then, I didn't watch horror films like I do now. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, he sticks his hand in there, and he gets sucked in. Well, he gets he gets sucked in, and there's there's a great guy Cooper, who's like he's the the black dude, the Mister Fix It man. He sort of can, he he knows how to do everything. Right. He's not just an engineer. He's he's he can do everything, and he's, he's also. MacGyver. He's like MacGyver, yes. <laughs> and he he's watching over everyone, and they call him Little Bear. The, they, Jack knows where he is. Yeah. So Cooper rushes into action. Yes. Because something's and, and wrong. And they have a tether to Yeah, him. he's been tethered, pulled into this void or whatever. But it's like the tether is being pulled and pulled and pulled until it breaks. Until it breaks. And Cooper goes in and rescues him. Is able to get him out of this yeah. void. And he's comatose and clearly... He's seen... Is that when, when the tether breaks, is that when the whole ship just kind of... Yeah. Their ship yeah. almost explodes. Like, everything There's gets... There's, like, arcane mm-hmm. energies, this explosion of yeah. energy that flies out, goes throughout the ship and and, and causes the, the Lewis and Clark to be damaged and systems Severe are fraught. damage. Severe damage. Yeah. Hull breach, like a 27-foot yeah. hull breach in the Lewis and Clark. So they're basically, they're stranded. They're, they're running stranded. out of air. And so, uh, the, the captain uh, tells everyone they have to get onto the event horizon. And then, because everybody's seen Tarkovsky's Solaris, because Soderbergh hadn't remade Solaris yet, people start having visions. They do. They have visions. They have hallucinations. Hallu- uh, hallucinations. And everybody <laughs> starts having hallucinations. And we learn, uh, we learn, like, for instance, Kathleen Quinlan sees her young son. She's estranged from her husband. Right. Well, okay, so um, Little Bear, what's his name? Anyway. Jack Noseworthy. Jack that's the name of the actor. Noseworthy. Um, he is physically okay, but he mentally is not there. Like, he's just, he's out of it. And they have him in sick bay. Yeah, and also Jason Isaacs. From Star Trek Discovery is in this movie. Okay. You know, and he's he's another kind of he's kind of a medic, but sort of. Yeah. I mean, the cast is great. Yeah, they have overlapping roles, though. Yeah, they kind of do. Okay, so um, he's in he's in the sick bay, and that's where she she's the medic. Yeah. And um, she hears some Kathleen s- Quinlan Ka- is the doctor. Kathleen, okay, she's the doctor, and she um, hears a scratching sound, and she goes over to another, uh, I don't know, sick bay bed that has a yeah, tent it, over it. Yeah, and she opens it up, and it's her son, who's not on the ship, but she's hallucinating that it's her son, and he's got these sores all over his legs. Yeah, he's like, it's, and he's like, mommy. Creepy, but the thing is, here's another part of this movie that I don't like. Clearly, her son's not on the ship, right? And clearly, she's not really there. He's not really there. He's not really there. So you would think, you would think, you'd be like, huh, "This is an intelligent woman. She's a medic. She's a doctor." I mean, and the ship has been gone for seven years, so they've yeah. had a weird arcane blast okay, of energy. Wouldn't you be like, okay, at the moment, this feels very real, but I know that he's not here. Right. Right. And also, uh, Sam Neill is having hallucinations of, of his dead wife. Yes. Uh, and, and everybody starts to have these hallucinations yeah. of people from their past. Yeah. Which couldn't possibly be there. Like, uh, um, 
Larry Fishburne's um, uh, a crew member, a mate of his, that, died in a fire. Died in a fire, and he didn't. He didn't rescue him. He just left. Right. And so that guy uh, haunts him. So they're being haunted by people from their past or, yeah. or loved ones or things like that. And um, it's clear. I mean, obviously, when you watch this movie, it's clear that that and anyone who's any at all savvy about this, we're all a little ahead of this movie. Like we're ahead of the characters. And I don't That's like because that. because it's derived from other films it, that we've completely. all seen. You know, it's 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 Alien meets Hellraiser meets <laughs> Solaris with a little of Prince of Darkness thrown in here. Yeah. With a little, I mean... Totally. And, and, and Sam Neill... Except, Neal, like, okay, it's Hellraiser, but not as good. <laughs> I mean, if it's going to be Hellraiser, well, at least show me some hell. See, I have to say, here's where I'm very torn by this movie. Because I really enjoy watching it. I enjoy it unfolding. I enjoy. I just, I, yeah. I mean. And then, and then here, there, there's, there's something that we see later. They find the ship's log. They find a, a ship's log. They do. And here's where this, this movie is kind of legendary, because when, when they made this movie, they shot these scenes of what happened to the crew, full oh, right. makeup effects and sex, and apparently they had porn stars. You know, it was. Hardcore. Oh, what I saw because they only show you a very quick. Right, and you want to slow down and look. I'm yeah, sure that. I'm no, sure... I did not want to slow down and look because I'm what sure... I saw was cannibalism, and it just looked like everybody was just eating. Eat, yeah, flesh. it's all hard. But and I'm sure. I'm sure if you Google Event Horizon Hell or something, they've done. Someone's done frame grabs. Of, I should have done that before we did the show. Has done because I could have put it on the screen. No, I've done frame grabs of every single thing that happens. But so this, there's all this legendary footage that was they lost that they had to cut but out. If you're of the gonna movie. go there, then actually go there. Well, again, we'll we'll talk about that. So basically, once this mayhem is unleashed, yes, uh, you you it's it's very clear to the audience that oh, you know this ship has clearly gone through another dimension, and that dimension is hell. They've gone yeah. to hell. They've gone to hell. And somehow... And somehow the ship itself is possessed. The ship itself is it possessed. And has become alive. Really? Well, that yeah. Well, they say that, but they're... And again, they don't really know. The problem... And this is my problem with Paul Anderson movies in general. Well, He's Sam, skating. He's skating by... Like, yeah. And Sam Neill is getting Sam more Neil, and more possessed. Yes. Becomes more and more possessed somehow because he created the ship. It, and... It's... it's uh, well, here's, here's the thing that... The, if I had done a rewrite on this, I would have said that in the testing phase of this project, he knew. Like, he, he would have touched this dimension before the Event Horizon was launched. And he desired, like, it's like it's like Frank Cotton in Hellraiser. That would have been a better story if well, he, had, while he was developing this ship, yes. if he had become possessed. Right, he'd been... He'd been and do, made the ship or, on purpose or, or, yes. to get to hell. Yes. Now that would have well, been Well, see, and that's the problem. A good movie. That's the problem with this movie. It, it touches on these ideas. It touches on all kinds of because stuff. Because it sets up... It doesn't up, follow through. Well, right, because it's not, it's not... There's a reason why the guy who wrote this movie did not write a whole lot afterwards. And, but the thing is, the thing is, I, I still have to stress that I enjoy this movie. I enjoy watching this movie. So, um. so what happens is, like, Sam Neill's getting possessed, but here's, here's my problem with movies like this. This is my problem. So, you've got this ship that's going beyond the universe. Yes. You know, it's going into another... So, when it gets to this dimension... Now, let's just say you're in the Stygian depths of some Lovecraftian dimension where the great old ones live. Like this. Yeah. So, so imagine if you're there and the event horizon suddenly shows up in, let's just call it hell. In hell. Like, and there's, there's clearly entities there. Right. That are enjoying this. So there's human beings. They're, yes. they're on the ship. The crew of the event horizon is on this ship. Right. So, so, and the ship shows up in hell. So let's run down what would happen. So like these these demons are like, check this out. Th what is this? This is a giant spaceship. Uh, we didn't even know like, and it's come from a different dimension. And yeah. There's all these people here. We should fuck with them. Right. Like like so it doesn't matter. Like an entire universe, a ship shows up. It just happens to show up in a place where there's some kind of an intelligence. Yes. That's like let's possess like, oh, this ship. Oh, we're so bored from an eternity in hell. <laughs> yeah. Let's fuck with these we, people. We have nothing but the better. The problem to is. The problem is, okay, so you, you fuck 
with the people on the on the ship, but then you just stay there. Well, Wouldn't you want you have the t- the ship is able to to bend space? Why aren't why isn't the ship headed to Earth to fuck with more people? Well, well see, that's another thing. Like that's that's what. No, it's just floating there outside of Neptune for like seven. Yeah, it's floating. But like, here, what? here here's the thing: if Sam Neil, when he was testing this engine. He was the first, he caught a glimpse of this realm. And so he sends the ship there, which... but That's in our version of the movie. Yeah, in our... And so w- what you would think that he would want to do, because he's getting more and more <clears throat> possessed. But you yes. don't really know by what. It's very undefined. Yeah, like, like at least give, at, us, give us more information about what's possessing him. What is possessing this ship? And as people are getting, one by one, the crew is getting eliminated. The, our characters are getting yeah. eliminated. And I don't like how they made the the doctor, who's very intelligent, look very stupid. Well, yeah, a lot of characters, I mean, they're running around after I mean, apparitions. she's chasing after her son, who she knows is not on the ship. And she does it twice. Well, and she also falls to her death. Hello? So, but here's the thing. There's here's the thing. It's like one of those movies where, like, like the granddaddy of all these movies is Alien. Yes. It's the granddaddy of all these movies. And the thing about Alien is the characters in Alien are blue collar people. Right. But they're all smart. Yes. There, there's one instance of people being dumb in Alien. And that's when Kane, when the egg opens. Because he doesn't know. It's really not dumb, but it's like, ooh, there's a bunch of eggs. I wonder what's in there. <laughs> you know, he doesn't know. That's the one stupid thing he did. He does, and then maybe it was dumb. Well, Ash lets him in, but but everybody in Alien is smart. Right. You're with them. They understand there's a threat. They know what to do. Right. They get motion trackers, and so Alien is the granddaddy of all of these things. Yeah. It's, it, it's sort of set this template. Right. And the problem with this movie is that the, the characters are not that smart yeah that i hate that about movies when characters are not smart where they would not act like a a, an intelligent human being and and really think things through that drives me nuts like you've got this intelligent woman who's a doctor and she just chases after a hallucination come on well and clearly i mean clearly um when cooper says no i pulled him out of a void of water you know, people and people and that's like another thing. Like, wh- like he's the smartest dude. Another thing, he, he's he's like the black dude they don't they don't listen to. Like he's just, he's like, no, I pulled him out of this void of water. And Sam Neill's like, oh come on, that's impossible. No, I know everything there is to know void about these of ships. Water? What do you mean? You know when they when he goes in and gets Jack Noseworthy out of the void at the beginning. Oh, it's well, like that's this not water. Well, Why is he a, calling it water? I'm I'm. Ca- I'm calling it that. It's oh. a void because he put his hand in there. Right. It's like whatever it is, it's liquid. Yeah. It's liquid that's not flowing out. Right, right, right. He's the one guy that you don't sit there and go, well, that's impossible. Everyone knows that he knows his shit. So if he right. says that, it's like, why yeah. don't we all go see? Right, and nobody they believes like, anything th- anybody says. No, they question him, and I'm like, I'm like, dude, this guy, your, ma- your boy Cooper here, knows how to work everything on the ship. When the, the Lewis and Clark gets damaged, he's out there, he's doing spacewalks, welding the ship back together, and yet there's still a moment where people aren't believing him and he gets all frustrated. Right. You believe that guy. That guy knows how to do but everything. But they don't believe anybody in this in this movie. Like, no. they'll tell them, this happened to me, and like, no, and the no thing it is, didn't. If your spaceship disappears seven years previously and then it just shows up intact, all bets are off. Yeah, there's you know, something then you should freaky go in going there. on. There's something freaky going on, and like when all this, there's it's one freaky thing after another, it just it gets is. compounded and compounded it and is. compounded, and then Jack wor- knows where they like. And they just get dumber and dumber and dumber as it goes along. And I hate that. I hate that too. And, and it's 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 like what happens in Prometheus. Ridley Scott yes. makes Alien, then Prometheus when everybody's stupid. So then again, who's gonna know that this ship's gone to hell? Basically, they insinuate. But when they look, here's the thing: they look at the ship's log, and they see the cannibalism. Yeah. They see a character who's clearly taken out his eyeballs. Oh my god! Like they don't stop and go, bruh. Okay, we're on a spaceship in Neptune space. We have a gravity drive, and this entire crew has become cannibalistic. Whatever they are, pulling their eyes out. Yeah. No one stops and says. 
well, this is something we should really seriously look at. I know the flip side of it is that, okay, they've only got 20 hours. There's air running out. They have to repair everything. And that's another thing where they copied Hellraiser. It's like they blurred the line between pain and pleasure. Like you were saying, they were they hired porn stars and stuff, and so they're like, well, what the hell? The problem, again, the problem that I have with this movie is they do not define, like there's this great evil out there. Yeah. This great evil, and it's very undefined. It like, is. They don't say what it is. They nope. just don't go far enough because the movie's not smart enough to do it's so. It's not. Whereas in Hellraiser... Yeah. In Hellraiser, you, and we talk about this, and I talk about this a lot, you have to summon the demons. You do. You have to use the lament you configuration, the, yes. you open it up, and only and, then, the yeah. Cenobites don't just show up to fuck with you. No, it's true. They call when they're summoned, and they're yes. summoned by human beings, yes. and it shows human foibles. In this movie, they're like, oh, I'm going to make a movie that's like Solaris. So in Solaris, in the movie Solaris... I don't know if I've seen that. It's a Russian science fiction film. It'd be good to watch, but... And Steven Soderbergh remade it. But the thing about Solaris is it's over a planet. Okay. And the planet itself is alive. So the planet is trying... The reason that he, the reason the planet... These manifestations are happening in Solaris, people are seeing your dead wife keep coming back, is because the planet, in its way, is trying to... It's like a big, giant brain. It's trying to communicate with the crew. Oh. So in this, you've got all these asks. Like, not only did this whatever force out there from some Cthulhu demon realm, old ones, whatever dimension it's yeah. from. Not only did they choose to commandeer a spaceship. Yeah, they you know, commandeer a spaceship and just float there. And then they use the gravity drive when it's convenient to, here, we're going to pull people into our dimension. None Why aren't they headed towards Earth? Well, yeah, I mean, there's all planet f If they want to fuck with people. Come on, man. That'd be like a playground for them. Well, and what's interesting is they kind of insinuate at the end of the movie... You know, when the, when that. the, all that, well, there's the event horizons now being discovered, like, oh, maybe something's going to happen, you know, but, but the thing is, if they haven't defined, like, like whenever you see, again, there has to be rules to this stuff. Yeah. You have to establish rules. If there's no rules and there are no rules here, yeah, the rules it's just, are not... it's like, let's, let's take this scene and let's take that scene and let's do all this stuff. So when you're watching this, you as a viewer are trying to be engaged by this. And and then I think the movie goes totally off the rails as everything's falling apart. I mean Cooper it winds does. up in a, in a he winds up in a a chunk of of spaceship that's been blasted out. He's spinning around. Yes, right. And then he pulls and then he, he, somehow he gets back to the ship. Yeah, he pulls what 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 Matt Damon does to get back to the ship yeah, in the Martian. Yeah. Exactly. But it's like you don't even see where he is in relation to the event horizon. Right. Like it's like, wait, where they just show him? You don't I, even see the event. Horizon. No, you see him Iron Manning it toward right. the thing, and you're like, come like, on, dude. Yeah. Mm, and and then all the that. stuff that happens, explosive decompression. Or, or when when the when the little bear uh, gets ejected out, it's like he would instantly die. I'm sorry. No, no, that's he not. Would that's not true. Come on, it's so cold, and he's barefoot. He's barefoot. His feet would fall off, and his hands would fall off. He had nothing on his feet, and nothing on his hand, nothing on his head. And then, and his Larry, head would have fallen and Larry off. Larry Fishburne comes to rescue him. No, there's no way. I can't believe that. And he survives. Well, especially because no. people should have seen Outland, no. which came out in 1981, which is long before this is you know before this movie when you have great explosive decompression and people's heads exploding. On Io. Yeah, he wouldn't have survived that. So That's, that was ridiculous to me. I was like, "This is dumb." Now, despite all of that, I find this movie very watchable. <laughs> I I do. I watch this movie, and maybe it's because you know I've watched so many science fiction movies. I appreciate the production design. There's a lot of atmosphere in this movie. There's some genuinely sort of creepy moments that are never creepy enough, though. I don't know. It's just so disorganized. I don't find this pleasurable to watch. I don't. And I've seen it twice now, and I don't think I'll ever watch it again. I love science fiction, and I love horror. And this just does not fit the bill at all. Well, I, but I, again, I do take pleasure in this movie, and I and think... why is Sam Neill in so many stupid movies? Are you saying Possession was stupid? It's not stupid. Why are you going? Why are you got? Okay, it's what? not stupid, but nonsensical. It, 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 no, I, I don't think you're being fair. 
Yeah, well, you know how I feel about that movie. At least that movie was more intelligent. And than by this the way, one. he was in this movie. Lest we not forget, he becomes the creature that was in possession. Well, he he also looks like a centipite. You know, with the, suddenly his face yeah, is crisscrossed like, with yes, stars and all. Exactly, that's and why like, it's like, come on. You're like, where is this? Have thing? an original thought. Yeah, piece. I mean, it, it would crisscross without the barbed wire. Yeah, yeah, I, exactly. I, I, I mean, and then he, you know, he's got the, the. It is a cool effect, the holes. And there's another thing about this movie that's always bothered me too. Yeah. There's there's a lot of lame foreground, like when they first get into the event horizon, you see all these floating things, which are clearly yes. computer generated. And they're in the foreground. And I understand, like... And also, another thing that really bothers me, and every time... I've probably seen this movie. Like, look, I forgot to hold up. I own the Blu-ray. I bought this movie. <laughs> I bought this movie because I like this movie. And when they announce that they're doing a 4K version, I'll pre-order that shit. And then you'll be like, why do you have two copies of Come this movie? Come on, man. We're never watching this movie again. No, Please but, do not buy the... No, there's things in this movie that if I ever get to make another movie, which I hope to do... You would not... No, you would are, not take elements from this there movie. There are things, if the the production design, I think, is worth uh, worth examining, there are things in this movie that are very valuable. And you know what? The set of the gravity drive, even though it looks like it's some torture chamber from the medieval era, there's things in this movie that are, that are I think, are worth watching. It's pretty... Look, you know, uh, Richard Urisich, Urisich, he did the special effects. There's a lot of the... the, the some the of the special Neptune. effects. No, there's some good stuff in this uh, movie, man. When... Um... When the Lewis and Clark explodes, that looked so fake. Well, the end of this movie gets a little lackluster. The fighting and the... It's... it's. Whew. Well, look. All right. So, so let me ask you this. You just reject this movie wholeheartedly. I mean, I didn't absolutely hate it. I don't think it was the worst movie I ever ever seen. But, I mean, that's Body Melt. But, um... <laughs> um... Body Melt <clears throat> is not the worst movie you've ever seen no, because Body that's Melt true. knows what it is. It's not, it knows what it is. Body it's melt, not the worst body movie melt, I've seen. See, you can't say that because Body <clears throat> yeah, Melt set right, out right. to do exactly you what You are right. Like this, and I'd have to see Body Melt again because I think I just Well, you know, it we've out. never watched my beautiful Vinegar Syndrome Blu-ray. Well, we should do it for uh, for this show. Uh, yeah, well. Would people watch us talking about Body Melt? Yeah, I think they would. <laughs> We just have to have a second bottle of wine. So I think that I, I I think though that look I still like with all of Paul Anderson's films, Alien versus Predator, not a great movie, kind of wrecks a lot of the mythology. I like watching it. Soldier, his movie, his follow up to this, not a great movie, but still enjoyable. What is with this guy? I've never seen his other movies, but what is with this guy? Well, he's he doesn't thing. know how to put together an original thought, an intelligent well, uh, original thought. Come well, on, <sighs> and yet you're going to like be okay with this? No, no I know you're I, okay with crappy art. No, I, no, I, it's not that. I'm, Come on, I'm not derivative saying, I'm, crappy art. Look, there's a lot of things that are derivative that I like. I'm not saying derivative is Even bad. Even the, the original Terminator is I'm derivative. I'm saying he derived from so many different films and mashed it all together where it doesn't even make sense. At least tell well, a good story. Yeah, the, the story the, that's the problem. leaves you like, eh. The problem is it wouldn't bother me if... I want to see. I want to see the demons. I want to see them, you well, know, like coming up with their pl evil plan. I want to see hell. Why didn't we go to hell in this? Well, they film? have. They have. Clips or I want to see them like figuring out the demons how to get to Earth. Why didn't they do that? Why weren't they like, ooh, we're going to get what? to Earth and we're going to and we're going to fuck up the Earth? You no, just, you just reminded no, none me. None of that happened. There's a little of the Disney's the black hole in this movie with the design of the, that's why. See, he derived from everything, yet it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, but, but, okay. But there's still enough. There's still enough in it that, that, uh, uh, but you're right. I mean, the thing that is most lacking for me in this movie is there's really no villain. You know, they try and create Sam Neill and they have him be right. possessed as a villain. And maybe his, his hubris makes him villainous because he built this ship without knowing. Yeah. And he keeps coming back. But, but it, it, it yeah, it, for no reason at all. For no reason. I mean, you can't, you can't like, set really? up. Really? Well, if you're going to have some Lovecraftian entity that's out there, you know, you can't then ask the audience to believe that, all right. right. All, so how all, come he all, keeps coming back? And how come in the original crew, the captain didn't keep coming back? 
And why isn't the captain of the original crew there? Like, why isn't he being all creepy well, and that's, controlling that's, everything? That's that a, would have been a better story. That's a very good question. At the end, all the crew... Yeah, where you know, are they? They're just, like, gone? Well, they were, like, eviscerated. Yeah, but, but in hell, apart. don't the demons want to torture people in eternity? So where are those people? Well, they insinuate... Why aren't they internally... I mean... E- but they insi- eternally they insinuate torturing that. torturing these people. Where are they then? Why can't we see that? Well, that's I I agree. This film plays fast and loose yes, with Sam all that. Sam Neil keeps coming back. Why don't the, the other crew members? Oh, keep easy, back? Cheetah. I don't know. No, I'm saying like this is so nonsensical. Well, no, it is. It is. And I think it hurts the film. It does hurt it. I think it hurts the film. I mean, I, no, I think I think as I'm sweating, as I'm having wine in this hot right. Uh, uh, <sighs> Whew, I'm um, getting old. I, I know, I, but that's these are these are all very good questions. If that... you're gonna spend sixty million dollars, then you better make a freaking good movie. Well, the thing is, this movie isn't a bad movie. It's absolutely it's not a bad movie. It, no, it's absolutely watchable. It's handsomely made. It's watchable, but it's it got, leaves you like so frustrated. It's got good acting. No, but this this shows that great stories begin and end with the written word. Yeah, it does you, not have a good story. Th- this film, the the problem with this story is it does not define whatever the adversary is. And I understand. Does H.P. Lovecraft, like when you read the Cthulhu mythos or whatever, do you know what the old ones are? Do you know? You don't really know. Like the cosmic forces. But these cosmic forces can fly a spaceship. They can they can cause a gravity drive to stop, and they can they can apparently pull people into the void. They the gravity drive itself. I mean, it's all you're just supposed to like. Oh, I guess they can do that. And and the question. So why is, haven't they been doing that? Well, the real question is why did they do it? And yeah, like you why? said, if you've got a spaceship and you can suddenly possess the ship, why not go to Earth and have a real good time? Right, they could have a huge party there. Yeah, I mean. Corrupt the souls of however many billion people live right? on Earth in 2040. But no, they're just waiting for more people to show up? That's well, ridiculous. It, it, well, it is. I mean, none of it, when you start thinking about it, none of it works. I mean, none of it. The idea, look, the idea of a derelict ghost ship goes all the way back to maritime stories when right. a ship came out of the fog. Yes. I mean, you expect, like, hey, George Kennedy was in a movie called Ghost Ship in, like, 1980. Yeah, see, that's interesting. You know, you could do that, and this plays on that. It, it is, like, the premise of this movie is really, really... The premise is good. It just didn't go anywhere. They don't even have, like, normally a ghost story is like, well, when 20,000 years, or, or, or uh, a century ago, or a woman was wrong, she was raped and murdered in this house, or Samara was thrown down a well by her mother who thought yeah. she was freaky, and, you know, whatever. There, there's none of that. You're just supposed to like, like, just assume. Well, if you're gonna, if you're gonna touch on the idea of going to hell, then you better show me some hell. You better show me some. Well, you some, got clips. Some evil conniving, you know. Well, they can't look. They can't have some Satan like, hey. No, nice but they could, ship you've got like here. Like I said, they could have. Even if you don't show an actual physical demon, at least show me some kind of intelligent being controlling things well even if you go back to something like 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 what is the point look if you're gonna what is the point of possessing a ship if you're not gonna do anything about it you're just gonna sit there and wait for humans to show up well even in prince of darkness which is a movie that cost three million dollars you know they have the 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 uh the the sleep the the brotherhood of sleep they do a pretty good job carpenter does a really good job of explaining the anti-god and the quantum realm and things are different and the mirror i mean this movie has a it, it owes a I love Prince of Darkness. It has a huge debt of gratitude to pay to, to Prince of Darkness. Prince of Darkness, Hellraiser, Alien, Solaris, all of these things, but it doesn't offer an explanation. No. The mayhem is not is not there. And 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 it's just whatever happens like wouldn't it be cool if Sam Neill did this? Wouldn't it be cool if yeah. uh, I'm going to chase my daughter or my son and fall yeah. off a thing and 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 Dumb. die? Dumb. And and Larry Fishburne, yeah. Well, you know, one time I was on this ship, and uh, yeah, I'm haunted by the and guy. The I couldn't burning save. guy comes after you. And it wasn't like Come it wasn't on, like man. he caused that. It was it was an accident that happened. It was. But he f- and there's nothing he could have done about it. But anyway, all right. Well, so you really didn't like this movie. Um. No. Okay. It wasn't smart enough. 
Well, that's true. I like the idea of this movie, but I I love the idea of science fiction and horror mashed up together. But well, it was not done well. Okay, hang on. We've been going on a no. rant. People got to see what people here have to say about uh, Event Horizon. Uh, let's go back. Let's see what people have to say. Uh uh, oh, Connie Sang is here. Connie Hello. Sang. I should say to Connie, I got a package in the mail today, Connie. Yes. Uh, I did. Uh, I haven't <laughs> opened it yet. Connie says, I've never been a horror gore fan, and to this day I have no idea why my sister took me to see this movie on my birthday, <gasps> release day. Even seeing the title gives me the creeps. Worst birthday ever. Well, Connie, it's clear. Wow. Well, it's clear, by the way, looking at this camera. It's clear why your sister took you. She hates you. <laughs> that's why she took you to she see a movie she was trying to torture you yeah trying to torture wow, you wow okay Fire in the Sky is another film that scared me for life especially when I saw it as 11 year old ooh Connie Fire in the Sky okay. I haven't seen that Fire in the Sky is about it's an alien abduction movie about Travis Walton ooh. there is a scene Connie I know what you're seeing you're talking about because I love this scene I think it's one of the great scary scenes in a movie where the aliens experiment on him it's Ooh. awesome. It's so well done. That it's so sounds well. awesome. As a matter of we fact, should watch that. there should have been, if they ripped off another movie, they should have ripped off a little bit of Fire in the Sky because if you want to look at a scene that's visceral, quick cuts, horror, Fire in the Sky, a lot of people don't think about it because it's a science fiction movie or it's an alien abduction movie. Connie, you are correct. You are correct. Good call on that. Uh, Timbula, the spider monkey, is here, and he says, I showed this film to my girlfriend. I love that Tim <laughs> always writes in with stories about the girlfriends. <laughs> like, every... It's great. I saw this... I, I, I showed this film to my girlfriend, who's a big horror and gore fan. She thought it was a big disappointment because it had so much potential. She got angry when I told her about all the stuff they cut to get it released. They should put out an NC-17 cut on Blu-ray. Well, hopefully they will. Well, hopefully that makes more sense. Yeah, we'll, we'll see if they do. We'll see if they do. Um, uh, Tim also says, also, we have, uh, we have an official actually going out somewhere to do something date coming up. Ooh. July 9th in Sydney, the Hayden Orpheum Cinema is showing 2001 and 70 millimeter. Wow. It's the same theater I saw that saw the death of Superman lives and got to meet John Schnepp. Well, wow, congratulations. So your theaters are open. Uh, yeah. Cause they figured out a way to beat down the, uh, not the, here, not here, you know? Yeah. You guys will probably get to see Tenant. We won't. Hey, look who's here. Julius Goodwin is here. Uh, I asked this a few days ago. Now I'm asking Miss Elizabeth, can you do the live long and prosper Vulcan salute? <laughs> yes, I can. You got to move your thumb out a little higher, though. Come on. If, there you go. All right. Voila. All right. Oops, I spoke French. Oh, there you go. Oops. Timbula the Spider Monkey goes on and says, also, also, wasn't this episode going to be Miller's Crossing? Either way, it's a movie I like, so I'm happy. Well, it was going to be Miller's it Crossing. It was, it was. But we decided to change. We figured a lot of people just were not that excited about Miller's Crossing. Yeah. Even though I love Miller's Crossing. I love it, love it, love it. I think you guys love when we... By the way, to be honest, we were going to do Ex Machina, and then the Richard called us. And he's like, no, you can't do Ex Machina. You can't That's, just do that off the off the. I cuff. have to plan for this. We have to have watch parties. <laughs> this is like Kubrickian. You can't just toss off Ex Machina, which, by the way, I appreciated. The Richards he's right. correct. But we are going to do Ex Machina, I think, next week. Um, so, yes. With a lot of lead up. A lot of lead up. Max World Entertainment is here. Trace here. <laughs> Hello, Elizabeth and the sanctimoniously notorious Viceroy of Varus Militude R&B. Much love from Nicole and I. Give them hell, Elizabeth. <laughs> yes, I want some actual hell. Uh, we didn't get enough hell. We didn't get hell. We got a little taste of hell. Yeah, not enough. Eyes on the Wire sends in a tip and says, Prometheus School of Engineering, sticking your hand in a liquid abyss. <laughs> like, when does anybody think that's a good idea? No. Or when people, like, in movies, they, they touch a liquid and they, like, smell it or, or taste it even. I was like, seriously? Do people actually do that? No! You don't freaking do that! Especially scientists. Engineers. That's stupid. You know, if you see something like like a, a water that's not... Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's... Yeah. 
Uh, Eyes sends in a tip and says, Event Horizon is a good example of a movie that people can agree is objectively bad, but in subjective terms can be good and enjoyed by viewers. I agree with that. <laughs> I agree with that because I am, uh, I am, you know, I should usually, I should turn on the air conditioner before we come in Yeah, here. you really should. Uh, I turn it off. Um, but um, uh, you're right. You're right. I mean, I, I, again, I enjoy this movie. I, as a matter of fact, enjoy Paul Anderson's movies. Like I like watching them. I don't think Aliens versus Pre- or uh, uh, yeah, a- a- AVP. I don't think that's particularly good, and it-, it violates Alien canon and all kinds of things. You know, the aliens did not come to hunt predators in a in a pyramid on Earth, in the Arctic. I don't, you know, but it's in the movie. You go with it, and you're like, uh, okay. And just, Soldier, just, Soldier, so, which, by the way, I own these movies, too. I own these you movies. You know how I feel about it? There are so many intelligent films out there. It's like, why would I waste my time watching a film over and over again that is not smart? Well, because there's certain things, I mean, as a as a fan of science no, fiction, I there's like... there's better horror out there, and there's better science fiction out there. Well, the Richard told us not to watch Ex Machina, which we were going to watch. We are in the middle what of I'm it. What I'm saying is like, it. okay, I've seen this twice now. That is enough. I will never watch this film again. There is no reason to. It's not smart. You don't want to see the 4K transfer and see how it looks? No, I really don't care. Oh, okay. I've seen it twice. I'm going to. And that's twice too many. Throg is here. Throg Corleone. Take Hellraiser, cross it with the dumb adults from E.T. You get Event Horizon. I just wish... <laughs> They could find the stuff that was cut to get the R rating. I'll watch it with you both. It deserves a good riff track. But the thing is, here's the thing. It's not a terrible movie. I don't think it's terrible. I, I like the actors. They're giving it their all. Uh, I think it's it's well designed. I, I, I like a lot of what's going on in the film. The problem is, it's missing its villains. It's missing its antagonists. It's, it's relying upon... You know the the cosmic the the same thing that Lovecraft relied upon, but at least you know you get color out of space or something. Come on, man. No. No. All right. Well, uh, Sean M sends in a super chat and says Elizabeth Bell. Those are all great ideas, really, but why not like the film for what it is? Ooh, good question. Why because, not? like I said, there's so many intelligent films out there. Why would I waste my time? Watching this again. I've watched it two times. Yeah, That's but okay. Enough. Say you never watch it again. Could, is there something in here you can find enjoyable? I find something enjoyable about this movie. Why? It's derived from all kinds of other movies. I'd rather watch those other movies. Well, that's a good point. Why would I watch this one? If at least it it led you somewhere, okay, but well, it has it doesn't have a good story. Let me. Ask, I love the premise, but it was not. Look, it didn't go anywhere. Okay, let me posit this <clears> question <throat> to you. Let's say you're like 10 years old now and you haven't seen Hellraiser and you come across this movie on cable one late night and you watch it and it's your first experience with these ideas. You don't know Solaris. You don't know Hellraiser. You don't know Prince of Darkness. You might not have even seen Alien, but this is your first experience with sci-fi horror and you like it. Are you wrong? That's a good point. I probably would have liked this film. Some young kid, girl, boy, or however they identify, is going to come across this movie, and it's going to be their first experience with sci-fi horror, and it's going to blow their minds. Yes, that's true. You do have a point. You do have a point. I mean, I wish that weren't the case. I grapple with this with Star Trek Discovery and Picard all the time. That's going to be their first experience. And obviously... Doesn't that make you sad, though? Well, no, it doesn't make me sad because I was watching god-awful shit when I was a kid, too. We watched everything. But the thing is, we loved everything because there wasn't that much. Now we're, like, saturated with so much stuff. No, it's true. But, like, you know, your first experience with something... Like, I watched this movie that I used to love called They Came From Beyond Space with the Moon Master. Okay. It's fucking terrible. (laughs) I saw it later, but I want to own it. I don't own it, and I, I want to get it. But I, as a kid, I loved it because I watched anything. I didn't have my I did. I watched my everything tastes too. were not defined yet, and yes. I don't. I don't think it's fair. Like, like that's why some people think Return of the Jedi is their favorite Star Wars movie because it was the first one they saw in the theater. Okay, so are they wrong? I get that. You can't take away someone's experience. I'm not from saying them. they're wrong. I'm just saying that for me. This does not have a good story. The story 
Well, yeah, because we've seen other things for a student. Right. And I think ultimately, I can't unknow what I know. Yes, and I think ultimately a story. Um, I'm only I'm only using uh, I'm only saying that for kids who might come across it the first time. I think it's objectively first not... first of all I would not want my ten year old child to watch this. I'm just saying. Yeah, but if my 10-year-old child admitted to me, Dad, I watched Event Horizon, <laughs> I'd be like, all right. And what did you think? Um, the kid would say, well, Dad, I don't think they showed enough of that gross tape. Though. I wanted to see more of what was going on. Oh, the no. Ship log, the ship that log. tape, no. They showed enough of that. No, but it was... It, I, I, I'm not into the gore. I'm, I, not, uh, I'm not into the gore. I'm, in, I'm into very intelligent horror. I'm not into... Gory. Well, that's look the, gory pro- the horror. I think the problem with movies like this is even if you come across them when you're a ten year old, they do do you a disservice because they're not smart. They're not smart. Like ultimately, you want kids by the time you're ten or whatever, you want you want to have you want to present a story that and that this makes is, them think. Yeah, this is a Paramount film, and I don't <laughs> think like I would much rather, even though it's psychosexual, and I'd much rather rather have a ten year old watch Hellraiser than watch this. <laughs> I was about to say that, like Hellraiser is like ten times more intelligent. Watch than this. that'll get that'll be the now, one thing that gets. I would me not canceled. allow a ten year old to watch Hellraiser, but I'm saying the the level of intelligence in Hellraiser is whoo. Yeah, but you're not allow this. you're not allowing a kid. A kid's sneaking. If a kid sneaks, fine. To watch he's Hellraiser. sneaking. Then okay, if he's gonna sneak, I'd rather he see Hellraiser than this. I know that's what's gonna get us canceled. I know. Uh, ten year olds uh, do not uh, watch Hellraiser. Yeah, I mean, just to be clear, do not. We're I not would never advocating. So- Sophie is 17, she's going to be 17, and I, I still wouldn't want her to watch Hellraiser. Right, so I just want to be clear. However... Or even this film. If you were dealing with the stuff that I was watching and reading when I was 10 years old... Well, I wasn't wa- it wasn't until I was 13 Look, that I I didn't even get into program. horror until I was in my 30s. Okay. And then it was very slowly. Very slowly. All right. <laughs> Uh, Mukbang is here. I'm agreeing with Liz tonight. It's a tough watch, and it wasn't great. I didn't say it was great, <laughs> Mukbang. I never said it was great. I just to be clear, I just there's I find look as somebody who grew up watching lots of schlock that I I try and find something to like in every movie. This is look when Alien came out in the '80s, there was all kinds of low budget Alien knockoffs. Galaxy of Terror, which I loved, Forbidden World, Creature. You know, extra, all this stuff. Some of it I like more than others, but I did watch it all. And, um, I don't know what that means, but... Gerald sends in a tip and says, I saw Event Horizon at a movie theater with a full suspension of disbelief, and it scared the heck out of me. It was Brief scary. scenes of hellish visions were enough to give me a sense of dread. But yeah. I can see how the plot doesn't hold up under close, close scrutiny. Gerald, that's the thing. And yeah. I'm, I bet when you saw the movie, you I think it's okay to enjoy a film for its own sake, and then you can like it. I mean, there are films that I couldn't say that are great, great movies, but I enjoy them for me. And this movie, I'll tell you something. This movie announces itself from the opening credits. They're bad. There's like a CG background, and the credits like descend into or get sucked into infinity like a black hole or whatever. They're just not good. They're not clever. And remember, when you're coming off of 1979's Alien, the opening credits for Alien, again, everything in Alien is the Tiffany gold standard of what to do. And if you're, you should be aspiring, I mean, you might fail, but this movie doesn't reach those heights. Yeah. Hey, look who's here. Dr. Strange Claude is here. <laughs> Bonsoir, Madame Elizabeth et Monsieur hey, Robert. Hey. I can no longer sit back and allow the bad robot infiltration, the Paul Anderson derivative subversion, and the international soap opera writer conspiracy to sap and impurify all of our precious fandom. <laughs> wow. He's not wrong, though. Yeah. Yep. He's not wrong. <clears throat> uh, and I understand. I understand. Paul W.S. Throg... Sends in a tip and says, I like Paul W.S. Anderson's Three Musketeers. See? He makes movies that are enjoyable. Oh, hey. And I don't know why... Three Musketeers? Like the the comedy one? No. Oh. No, no. It's the more recent one. And I don't know why outside it felt fun. Hey, Rob, should the new iteration of Pinhead be a woman? I'm not bothered by that. Charlize Theron would be awesome. You know what? I have no... 
problem with Pinhead being gender swapped to a woman, and that, my friend, is great casting. Charlize Theron is the new Pinhead. Oh, why are they remaking it? Yeah, well, th- yeah, they're talking about remake. They're always talking oh. about remaking. But, but my problem, here's my problem. If they are going to remake Pinhead, or they're going to redo Hellraiser and make Pinhead a woman, I want Pinhead's methodology of torture to be distinctly feminine in nature. Like, like how, Ooh. like, yeah, like, like that's yes. a thing. If you're going to go yeah, after. Yeah, because see, I was thinking like, hmm, how would you depict my, a woman pinhead? Yeah, my problem with all of this gender swapping is they're, they're not, it's one thing to make a character, change a character from a man to a woman. But if you're not delving into the feminine about where that gender swap comes yes. from, you need to make that pinhead, that female pinhead, the most diabolical pinhead that does what, what would a what would a female pinhead yes. do to a male victim or vice versa? Like in Hellraiser, when Doug Bradley is 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 um is going after uh, Ashley Lawrence is what's her name? I forget her name in the movie. Um, Cotton. He's a man, so there's an that extra added. This male oh, character yeah. is tormenting a woman, yes. and and I think we can't forget. Everybody wants to like put men and women on the same plane these days. No. The whole thing about horror, and horror is derived, especially a lot of it, is biological. The idea of the blood, and the idea of the gestation of, of, of another creature inside of you, and and all of that stuff. And, 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 and it, look, play with gender all you want, but you need to get into the biology of it yeah. to make it really horrific. Yes. I mean, that's what blood is all about. If you're going to spill blood, you know, really get in there. And really, really, if you're going to have a female... I, I hope that a female hell uh, pinhead would be even more evil and diabolical, drawing on, on the way the way a woman can give life, the way she can snuff it out should be more interesting, too. That would be amazing. So I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. <clears throat> um, Claudius McGuire <laughs> says, Rob, I am out here for you. You don't know what it's like to be me out here for you. <laughs> It is me standing out in the rain in my uniform, the pride-swallowing siege on Twitter that I will never fully tell you about, okay? Help me help help you. you. I love Claudius Maguire. I love that. I love that. The pride-swallowing siege on Twitter. It's fantastic. Wow, that was awesome. Uh, Sister Harrow (laughs) sends in a super chat and says, Hey, you two, I hope all is good. It is all, all good. All is good. Cheers. We have wine. I know. I mean, that's... <laughs> what could be wrong with that? That's the, uh, that's the show. <laughs> mm. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Sean M. sends in a super <laughs> chat and says, Dude, uh, Elizabeth, nobody wants 10-year-olds to watch Event Horizon. No. I would want them to watch James Burke's Connections and play the cello. But what are they going to do? <laughs> yeah, I mean... Look. Yeah. My kids snuck and watched um, that horrific that I would never watch the, the what is it, Human Centipede? The Human Centipede, yeah. Oh my god. They actually watched that. I don't know if they watched the whole thing, but when I caught them, I was livid. I just could not, because that's something I wouldn't even watch. Did like, you ask them what they thought about what they saw? No, I just was, uh, I was just, I couldn't believe, because I was very strict and I was very careful about what they watched. Apparently not that careful. But they're rocking the human centipede. Your your parenting skills are a little lax. I know. I was appalled. I couldn't believe that they got to that film. The like, thing is, it's not good. The even... human centipede isn't good. But just the idea of it, I've never seen it. And I would never watch that film. But just the idea of that film and then the thought that my children might have even just glimpsed a little piece of that film, like, it just blew my mind. I just was, I was so appalled. Yeah. Yeah. I guess ass to mouth comes later. Oh, please. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, nobody wants 10-year-olds to watch Hellraiser. Let's be clear about that. You need good parental supervision. Yeah. You know, and, like and My kids weren't allowed to watch. Look, so- Sophie's 17, and I still don't want her to watch these kind of films. No, it's true. It's true. Uh, Dead Pirate Claudius says, Should I continue to enjoy the Olive Garden even after dining in Italy? Should you still love Pizza Hut after having <laughs> NYC Pizza? No. If you do, you should be shamed and cast out, 
marched naked through the streets of King's Landing and beaten with reeds. Well, come on, man. Like, I don't eat McDonald's and I don't eat Burger King because I've had much better than that. Yeah, but... I just don't. When you have better, you just don't have a taste for that junk. I understand that, but there are, you know, there are times when look, look, I no. can't look, I can't argue with I can't argue with the reasoning. <laughs> I mean, I can't argue with the reasoning. And it, I I agree, but like, I mean, you know, once you've got Alien and it's the Tiffany standard and it's 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 not like what are you not going to watch anything else? No, but like you don't have to watch this film repeatedly. You've seen it how many times? And you don't think that's enough? Well, I, I mean, I learn something. I glean something every Look, time I, I watch it. I only rewatch films I absolutely love, and that is just a handful. Even yeah. not even a handful. There's probably like three films that I would I would actually rewatch. So I don't. There's so many films out there. Like, why would I rewatch films that are eh, mediocre? I don't know. I'd rather watch something I haven't seen. Well, okay. <laughs> are you going to talk about how I have more than one copy of movies on? Yeah, you have more than one copy of many, many, many. I movies. knew that was coming. Well, you brought it up. Uh, Anthony Gonzalez sends in a tip and says. <laughs> Can you give Arrival your <clears throat> V-word test? So, Louise, Amy Adams' character attempts to speak to aliens using English, the best linguistic expert in the military can find, and she elects to try one of Earth's most complicated languages. Okay, Anthony, let me just say, but if there are aliens on Earth, maybe they were monitoring our communications. Maybe they know something about us she doesn't know. So I would say that if aliens come to Earth and show up, maybe they know more than they let on. Yeah. And we have to start somewhere. You know, you have to start with you do. English. You have to start somewhere. And and you have to give the audience, you have to give because even the audience knows that these aliens aren't going to know English. And that whole movie's about communication. So you got to start somewhere. I love Arrival. Yeah, that's a really good film. It's a really good movie. I think it does have the V word, verisimilitude. It does have the V word. I think it does. I think Arrival does have verisimilitude. And I'll tell you why. Just because you could go and make that point, and that's not a bad point you're making, doesn't mean that within the context or the text of the movie that you wouldn't believe it. I think that's important. I think that's important. Um, Doc Savage sends in a super chat and says, Since Showgirls is one of Elizabeth's top movies, it is? How, disappointed, how disappointed was she when a sequel didn't happen? I haven't even seen Showgirls. I know, and we have to do it. I haven't seen Showgirls. We're going to do show, Showgirls. We're How absolutely... How can it be one of my top movies? I haven't seen it. We are absolutely doing <laughs> Showgirls from Whining About Movies. Okay, let's do it. We're absolutely doing it. Is that our next movie? Not our next movie. Oh, wait. I'm picking the next movie. That's right. It's Yeah, it's Romantic Friday. Throg Pliskin says, I never went to Los Angeles. Too many pussies. <laughs> Come on, man. Give us a break. <laughs> what? Eyes sends in a tip and says, so let me get this straight. There are three human centipede movies, but we're still waiting for season four of Hannibal. Not fair, Rob. Not fair. Yeah, seriously. I'll tell you something. That's trash. I'll tell you something. Why anyone would come up with that? Ugh. If Hannibal does well on Netflix, anything's possible. I'd love to see a season anything's four of Hannibal. Anything's possible. Uh, <laughs> Throg McCready, nice thing reference, by the way, <laughs> sends in a tip and says, tag, I'm it. You always go ass to mouth, Ugh. Randall Graves. <laughs> you never go full retard, though, right? Can you watch? Can people watch Tropic Thunder anymore without Why? anybody getting mad? I don't know. I so didn't good. think that film was funny, and I love comedy. <clears throat> oh my god, Tropic Thunder is so funny. We yeah. gotta, we gotta wait, but we have. I don't like that kind of comedy. I really. Oh don't. my god, there's so much smart comedy in Tropic Thunder. No, it's not smart. It's dumb. It's not dumb. Tropic Thunder's come on, Les not. Grossman. And I love com I love comedy, but that that movie is I don't hilarious. Like that kind of comedy. All right, well, it's not. Uh, <laughs> Throg Mc Ronald McFrog says, "Please eat my fries." <laughs> fries before guys. Before this gets uh, before this gets uh, 
a little a little crazy. Hang on, did we miss somebody? Uh, the Squish Show. Yeah, I don't where is it? Uh, oh, here oh, it is. There it is. Uh, I love Event Horizon. It is the delicious Popeye's chicken of horror <laughs> sci-fi. I will give that up for the Squish Show. That's well, actually very. I guess astute. I don't eat Popeye's chicken, so I don't love this film. <laughs> I don't eat junk food. You're such an elitist. No, I'm not. I just, um, you know, when you've had good stuff, you just don't like the mediocre. Okay. <laughs> There's just not enough time. All right, to Elizabeth. Watch films like this. I understand. We're now at the end of our show. Yeah. Our Wednesday show, of Event Horizon, episode forty. Of Elizabeth. This is our 40th oh episode. God. 40th episode. 40. So we have our bottoms up scale. Yes. Our bottoms up. Bottom is... up scale. One glass of wine to four glasses of wine. One to four. Well, why are they? Why one to four? There are four glasses of wine in a bottle. Kind of like the amount of lights that Picard saw in uh, Chain of Command Part 2. There are four lights. There are four <laughs> bottles or glasses of wine. Four bottles. Four glasses of wine. Four glasses of wine. So I ask you the question, on our bottoms up scale. Yes. How many glasses of wine do you give Paul W.S. Anderson's 1997 oh. Event Horizon? I will give this film... Oh, that's hard. I didn't... Okay. I'm going to give it two. Two? Two. Two. Two glasses of wine. I give this movie two and a half glasses of wine. All right. Two and a half glasses of go. wine. Here's to that. Two, two and two and a half. Yeah. Well, um. I can't believe you're willing to rewatch a two and a half glass movie. <clears throat> Look, man, there's, a, uh, there's performances I like. Oh, hey, Claudius at Tiffany says, I agree with Elizabeth. Elizabeth, you should focus on the Tiffany standard of cinema. That's Remember, right. Remember, elitism in art is good. It's so true. Yeah, but but Claude, I mean, elitism. Like, if uh, look, we started out talking about these great. Look, I gave it two glasses. That's halfway. So it did didn't mean that I hated this film, but also it's like I've seen it twice now, and I don't need to see it anymore. I understand, but I mean... And if, if people love this film, that's okay with me. But I think the problem with talking about all the great movies is that they've already been talked about so much. Oh, I'm not saying we should only talk about the great movies. I love talking about the crappy movies. <laughs> it's fun. Well, yeah. No, I think it's fun. I mean, we also are, are like... Look, as you, we started out, I wanted to talk about great foreign films, and it is a show, too. Right, and we have to talk about films that you guys are actually interested in. I mean, for Romantic Fridays, there's so many films I would love to choose, but that I don't because I don't feel that people would be interested. Right, right. Right? Right. It's true, but Claude Claude makes a good point. Elizabeth, you should focus on the Tiffany standard of cinema. But you know what? If you talk, if you wax rhapsodic about the greatness of movies, which you could do, I, I don't know if that would be as fun. Right. Like, look, I That's love true. I love The English Patient. Everybody my whole life says, oh, The English Patient. I, I do, too. I love, But if we were to talk about The English Patient, all we would do is sit there and talk about how great it was. Yeah, because we both agree. It's yeah. a great movie. And I don't think very many people would want to watch that. Uh, that's true. Hey, look. Like, the, for our next film, I the, would love. The Devil sent us a tip. I love oh. you all. Perhaps you there, could, he showed up! Perhaps you could chime in. Why didn't you take the ship and fly it to Earth? Uh, yeah, I, uh, come on, man. Come on, Event Horizon. Go to Earth and corrupt all the people. But no, you just stayed there. Yeah, turn Earth into one bloody Bacchanalian. Just, you know, what would that look like? Some people say L.A. is already that way. Yeah. I don't know. Since we've been sheltering at home, L.A. has lost its luster. It really has. I could be anywhere. The last the last four months have made me yeah, realize we could, we could be, be anywhere. anywhere. Absolutely anywhere. We, with, we could have uh, like a park. Yeah. You know. We could actually afford a house if we like moved to the Midwest. M moved anywhere. To Cleveland, my hometown. <laughs> could buy a really nice house. Yeah, but we're doing all right though. It's okay. I like my garage. <laughs> the Rob Observatory. <laughs> when it gets finished. 
All right, well, this brings us to an end. Yes. Of Elizabeth's episode 40, Event Horizon. Yep. Which takes us to Friday Romance, whatever that's going to be. Yeah, I have three in mind, but like I said, I'm not sure what people would love more. I don't know. I don't know. You haven't told me. I don't know. Should I save them? Yeah, I think Maybe you, you guys could chime in. Yeah, okay. Well, that's okay, fine with me. Okay, so I would love to do Atonement. Okay. Okay. It's about World War II, so you might like that. Or I would like to do something fun like um, Strictly Ballroom. Yeah, that's kind of a cultish film, isn't it? I like Strictly Ballroom. That's a good one. <laughs> or I was thinking maybe even... Um, La La Land? All right, you floated three movies out there. Let's see what people say. <laughs> I have I have no... I'm not going to give you an opinion. You have to pick. People, I will you know. pick. It might not even be one of those three. Well, now we've come to the end. We've come to the end. All right, Elizabeth, the arbiter of cinematic excellence, what do we say at the end of these shows? We say everyone you meet has a story to tell. Actually, the Squish show says you should watch Year of the Comet. I've not seen that. We did just recently watch Night of the Comet, which I have on Blu-ray from we Screen did? Factory. Yeah, we did. What's that about? When the comet comes and vaporizes everybody and the two cheerleaders, you know, the high school student. We watched it like a month ago. I don't think so. Oh my God. We. Yeah, we did. And half the people are zombies and they're disintegrating and the two girls and they're shopping and then... Come on. Oh! We were going to do that for this show. We were going to do that for this show. Yeah. yeah. We watched it and decided yeah, okay. not to. But that's a different movie. With the... Year of the Comet is yeah. a different movie. Lawrence of Arabia. Ooh, you know, what, you know what's great about Lawrence oh, of Arabia? I've seen that since I was very, very young. Look at this. The 4K Columbia Classics. Dr. Strangelove. Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. I haven't even opened this yet. He just got it today. But, uh, yeah, pretty cool. Um... 4K, 4K Jerry Maguire. Come on, don't, no, 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 don't put that up. Come on, man. I love him. I know, but what? He you, needs to be in a, in a hospital bed. Why do you have to show George Lazy me? Come on. Because he's, he's broken. Oh, I know, I gotta fix him. Free he's the been, toys and no. fix them. But yeah, I try. I try. Anyway, we're going now. Ladies and gentlemen, gentle beings, kind souls, members of the 28 known galaxies, we're bringing an end to... Whining About Movies, episode 40, Event Horizon. You want to take us out? Yes. Have a better night. Have a better night. And we will see you Friday. I will be back on Rob's Observations tomorrow for episode number 445. Yeah, and I'll have a movie for you to announce. You'll have a movie for me tomorrow. to announce. All right. All right. I want to thank everybody. I want to thank the Richard. I want to thank Haynock. I want to thank Greg Smith. I want to thank Mike Bodden and all the moderating staff here please go to the whining about movies facebook page and please go to the post geek singularity facebook page the richard is always throwing watch parties by the way the devil chimes in and says ships mean nothing <laughs> i am everywhere yes well cheers to you satan mephistopheles the <laughs> prince of darkness how do you feel about all your various portrayals in movies and tv well i used to have nightmares about you there's a all lucifer the show that got renewed I'm telling you, it's pretty good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> pleased to meet you. Won't you guess my name? I used to have nightmares about Satan all the time. And my therapist, when I was young, said that they were sexual. I was like, no, I'm just scared of the devil. <laughs> yeah. Well. So there you go. Maybe you were scared of the devil because you were scared of him deflowering you. <laughs> No, I was not scared of that. I think the show has to end. I was not scared of I think of our that. show has okay, to end. Okay, have a better night. Have a better night, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Thanks for the support. Sean M. says, nothing is written. Nothing is written. Nothing is written. All right. Thank you all, and we will see you again for Whining About Movies, episode number 41. 41. You know what we have to do for the 42nd episode? What? We should watch Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Oh, yes. Let's do that. Let's do that. Just a thought. Yes, Just a yes, thought. yes, yes, yes. All right, everyone. 
Good night. Good night.